don't know you bought this. Well then, today we are saying goodbye to our loyal Schaefer Guardian 4000. We bought this 24 metre sprayer back in 2009, brand new. And it has been unstoppable. Never had a problem with it. Nothing that couldn't be fixed then and there. It's just been rather rather good and reliable so at the back here you can see it's an air shut off section control system with a little oil pot to keep all the seals good we put some little boom lights on end of last year I think it was just in case dad wanted to do a little bit of night spraying he did a little bit admittedly not a lot though and uh, yeah she runs on a centrifugal pump, which we did have set up on load sense. Which, uh, if you don't run load sense, I don't know what you're doing because when we put the load sense system on maybe three years ago, can't remember it was a while ago, um, instantly could tell the difference in diesel usage. We should have done it ages upon ages ago but this simple 24 metre boom is brilliant there's no there's manual tilt controls but um, that's its balance straight back to it you can't you can't make that Barely even touches the straw on that side to get back. And as you can see as well, the booms have got perfect balance while going down the field. When we had it, Dad made a carrier on the side, just carrying additional chemicals. But uh, we made that redundant a few years ago when he made a front box carry instead, which had a bit better capacity. So, yeah, there's not really a lot else to talk about. You've all seen our lovely little sprayer before and here she is so sad to see it go but you better have a look at what we've got coming instead
rightly or wrongly, we've decided to change our sprayer. Still keeping with the Schaefer, but what we've decided to do is go 36 meter, but have dual lines so we can do fertilizer and applications of chemical or feed. So we've got two spray lines in effect on that. We've also gone to 36 meter, mainly because we're like potato grabbers, where when there's a spray wheeling and you lift the bulbs, there's an awful lot of clod and it's a lot of extra work. So the less of those we can have in the field, obviously the better. So what we've got is Schaefer Sentry 5,000 litre tank. And my view on that is you don't have to fill it. You can still run it quite empty and not have the weight. Still, although it's a big sprayer, still quite light, along with a little T6 on the front. You know, we don't have to fill it. We don't have to go like a lunatic. You know, we've got plenty of time. I don't think this will increase output, but I do think that will lower our number of wheelands in the crops, so that must be better. So hopefully that'll that'll make life a little bit easier for everybody. So um, yeah. So this has got um, sensors on it, so that it will adjust and hold the height whilst you're spraying. And then when you get to the end, each side actually lifts up, so you can turn quite smoothly. And then when you start the sprayer spraying again, they lower down and go into work. Do you remember nice. which software system runs that? This is actually on a Muller screen um, with a Isobus connection, um, running off a Muller screen in the cab at the moment, but we might change that. We might change that and put that through the Topcon screen as well. But currently the Topcon screen gives uh, a GPS position out into the Muller screen. So we've still got the boom section control and we've gone from what was we five section control we're now 12 section control so we've got more control and less overlap so that'll be better as well and along with the the crop sensing we can actually then do variable rate fertilizer and also variable rate um, applications of uh, fungicide insecticide and herbicides and things like that so there's, there's things we can do what's going forward as well so that'll be quite interesting to watch and develop um, it's pretty much the same as the last machine as the other one behind us other than it's a little bit heavier duty on the back end to cope with 36 meters um, but yeah it's, it's a second hand machine and we've bought it with the idea that during the winter months we'll actually do some of the little jobs on it and the previous owners have actually touched it up but they've touched up any cracks on the paintwork with red paint so it looks a little bit off-putting shall we say so hopefully we'll get the chance to tidy that up during the winter and do all the little jobs on it which is, you know, with a with a 10 year old spray, there's going to be a few jobs in there. So uh, that's what we hope to do anyway. But we're not high, big volume spray people. We don't, we do enough, but we don't do that much. So that'll be a bit better. So, okay. Yeah. I'll do. Just having a quick comparison of the booms. They are still similar sort of structure, but completely different really. This here, I can't get my hand round. And this here, I can. So I think that instantly tells you what sort of difference has to go into this for the structure of it. But as well as uh, more weight in the boom, more heavy duty build to it. Uh, one thing which I've noticed which is quite good. Do you see on the 24, it has this little leak back. So, the internals on the uh, I can't remember if it's the internals of the ram or there's a valve in there which just slips the back a little bit so the boom ends just creeps back around a little bit the new one I think that's going to be uh, quite hard to happen that's just having a bit of a wash out make sure everything's working there's a lock system so it's not likely to creep back at all now by having a bit of a linkage in place. But more moving parts, more grease nipples, more things to look at. So, gain some, you lose some, a little.